This is fourth grade, module three, lesson 30. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue practicing the standard algorithm of dividing, only we're gonna add a little bit of a layer of complexity in that we're gonna have zero in the dividend. So there's gonna be a, a zero showing up inside the house. And we're also gonna have occasional problems where zero shows up in the quotient, uh, where a number won't go into something, and so we have to put in a zero. You know, the idea is there's nothing tricky about the number zero. It should not cause students trouble, but it really does. And so that's why uh, that's the purpose of this lesson is to uh, get students comfortable with the concept of zero showing up either in the dividend or in the quotient. So we're going to use the standard algorithm. And at this point, since we see that there's no zeros in the problem, it means there's going to be a zero in the quotient. Um, but let's just do our math. So we've got 831 divided by 4. And I'm going to try and use the Eureka math, uh, I don't know, way of describing what's going on. So we have 800s divided amongst four groups means there's going to be two hundreds in each group. We've used all 800, so we have no hundreds left over. And so now we're going to be focusing on the three tens. Now, if we have three tens and we're supposed to sort those tens, um, three tens, into four separate groups, we can't do that. We cannot put um, a 10 in each of the four groups. So we're going to put a zero right here. Now, if we wanted to, we could say, um, that means we've used zero tens and we still have three tens left over, which when combined with the one one means we now have 31 ones. All right. Um, and now 31 ones divided amongst four groups means each group is going to get seven ones. So if we, we've used up 28 ones and we have three ones left over. Now a little bit of a heads up. I showed it one way. Uh, I'm going to show it a slightly different way because they both work, right? And the idea, and I'm going to go a little bit quicker here, so let's see, uh, 800s divided amongst four groups is two, so that means we've used all 800s and now we can bring down that three, which represents three tens. Now here's the difference, right? So here we have three tens divided amongst four groups. We cannot, we cannot do that uh, in this context. So we're gonna put a zero here, just like we did over here. Uh, but I'm gonna do a little bit something different here is now I'm gonna bring down the three, uh, the one ones. So now we have three tens combined with three, uh, combined with one one, so we now have 31 ones. And notice how this is different from this, right? So now I have 31 ones divided amongst four groups, which means each group gets seven ones. We've used up 28 ones, and we have three left over. So in both cases, we have the answer of 207 with a three remaining, uh, but this might be seen as a little bit of a shortcut, whereas over here we explicitly multiplied zero times four and got zero. Over here we kind of implicitly did it and we skipped it and just brought down the additional one. Uh, so uh, parents and teachers allow your students to choose which one is more comfortable with them. My experience with middle school is a lot of students prefer to do this, which kind of, you know, it is what it is. I, I like the idea of students trying to save a little bit of time, and but at this point in the game, let students choose which method works for them. This time I'm going to divide, uh, but I am going to actually show the multiplication as our check. I didn't do that in the previous video uh, slide, because uh, I wanted to take time to show the two different ways to think about division. So we have 700s divided amongst three groups. So each group gets 200s. So we've used up 600s and we have 100 left over. Uh, we're going to bring down the two tens. So we now have 12 tens. We have 
one hundred and two tens, so we have twelve tens. Uh, divided amongst those three groups, which means each group is going to get four tens. So we've used up twelve tens, and we have nothing left over at this point. So now we have zero ones. Here's the tricky thing. If we have zero ones and we're dividing them amongst three groups, that means each group is going to get nothing. And so we need to record that zero right here. Parents and teachers, a lot of teachers, uh, a lot of books in the old say methods, the old way of thinking of things say, well, just take the zero and bring it up. Well, no, we don't want to do that at this point. We want to explain the mathematics that's going on. So I'm going to finish my thinking here. When we have zero ones and we're dividing it amongst three groups, that means each group is going to get zero. And if I really wanted to be explicit, I would say, okay, and zero times three is zero, and then you subtract, you get zero. This is totally unnecessary down here. Once we realize that our quotient ha ends in a zero, we're done. But I just thought I'd be explicit and continue. Uh, to check it, we're going to do three times 240. We have no remainder, so we don't have to worry about that. And we want to see the answer being 720. So I'm going to take 240, I'm going to multiply by 3, and I'm going to go old school, and I'm going to put our carrying up at the top here. So we have 3 times 0 is 0. Then we have 3 times 4 tens is 12 tens. So that's 2 carry the 1 extra 10, uh, the 10 tens. And then we've got 3 times 200 is 200s, is 600s, plus 1 more is 700s, and sure enough, we get 720, which is exactly what we are aiming for. So that tells us our answer of 240 is indeed correct. Um, we got 2060. Now, I prefer to leave off the comma when I'm dividing because down the road, um, there's going to be decimals. And I don't want students to be confusing their comma with a decimal and all that sort of stuff. So I like just plain old naked numbers without any adornment. No commas whatsoever. And then I'm going to divide. So I've got 2,000 divided amongst five groups. It means each group is going to get zero. Now, I don't have to put that zero there if I didn't want to. I could have said... Um, 2,000 divided amongst five groups, I can't do, so now I'm going to think of this as 20 hundreds, and 20 hundreds divided amongst five groups means each group is going to get four hundreds, means we've used up all 20 hundreds, and we now have zero hundreds left over. Now when I bring down this six, this is really six tens. And six tens divided amongst five groups means each group is going to get one ten, which means we've used up five tens and we have one ten left over. And then when I bring down this zero, it means I now have ten ones. And ten ones divided amongst five groups means each group is going to get two ones. We've used up all 10. We have no remainder whatsoever. So our answer is 412. The way we check it is we do 412 multiplied by 5. So 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. 5 times 4 is 20. And I get exactly what I was aiming for. So that tells me our answer of 412 is correct. And our last little sample of just continuing to practice. Now, teachers, this is a great opportunity. Just differentiate. So some students may need fewer problems. Some students, if they finish early, let them work on a really cool project. Let them work on some puzzles. Let them work on math games that really every kid should be doing. It's the way to bring math to life. Lots of ways to differentiate. Another way to differentiate is uh, let the students who finish early make videos, much like the videos I'm making. Let them make the videos so they can be uh, used as answer keys for all the students. So lots of different ways to differentiate. 
and we're going to divide, and I'm going to just go quickly here. We have 22 uh, hundreds, so 22 hundreds divided amongst five group, four groups is five hundreds in each group. We use 20 of them. We have two left over. So now I bring down the 110. So we now have 21 tens. And 21 tens divided amongst four groups means each group is going to get five tens. We use 20 tens. We have one ten left over. We bring down the eight ones. We now have 18 ones. And 18 ones uh, divided amongst the four groups, amongst the four groups means each group is going to have, uh, let's see, four ones. We've used up 16, and we have, whoa, let's see, whoa, gee whiz. Let's see if I can squeeze that in here. Let's see. We get two left over. All right. And so if we wanted to check, well, we have to check because the directions say so. So we know the way we're going to check it is we're going to do 4 times 1,554. And then we're going to add in our remainder of 2. And we really, really, really want our answer to be 6,218. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do that multiplication right here. So we have 1,554. Multiply by 4, and you get 4 times 4 is 16, carry the 1. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21, so I'm going to do that. And then we've got 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22, so 22. And then we have 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So we end up with 6,216. Now we're going to add in that 2, which was our remainder. And when we add in our 2, we get exactly what we were hoping for. So that tells us our answer, and I'm going to squeeze in the remainder 2 here, our answer of 1,554 remainder 2 is the correct answer. Now, interestingly enough, uh, this is a counterexample. There is no zeros in the uh, dividend. There is no zeros in the quotient. So this problem doesn't exactly fit. Anyway, uh, but there's your work. And that wraps up 4th grade module 3, lesson 30, dividing slightly more complicated problems where there's a, a zero inside the uh, house, as in, in the dividend, or sometimes there's going to be some division where there's going to be a zero in the quotient somewhere. In this case, it would be the second digit.